peewit or even as green plover, a very familiar bird 50 years ago here during the winter. And this species has gone down by 62%. Reed bunting, a rather nice little bird, used to be associated only with wetlands, moved out of the wetlands into farmland about 50 years ago. About 25 years ago, it started going down, and now on farmland, it's down 61%. Linnet, lovely little bird, used to be kept in cages, down overall by 52%. And finally, swallow, the epitome of summer, a migrant again going down to South Africa, but we think that farmland habitat is the reason why it's down by 43% in farmland in Britain. So what's the common factor? And the common factor with all these species is farmland. Farmland is where these birds are trying to live and they're finding it more and more difficult. They're finding that the hedgerows are being chopped down, they're finding that the crops themselves are becoming just crop. And even in the winter, when they used to have stubbles to feed on, now we're increasingly planting our new crops in the autumn, so there's no winter stubbles for the finches and larks and so on to feed on. If only we can get a certain amount of the primary productivity in farmland devoted to wildlife, only 2 or 3 percent, that's going to go a long way to solving the problem. There seem to be a problem with the indirect effects of pesticides on birds. No other organisation seemed to be really getting to grips with it, so we've endeavoured to get a literature review done. Dr Arnold Cook was one of the editors of this week's report. He works for English Nature, a government-sponsored body that monitors the countryside. The review considered 40 farmland bird species, and it found that out of those, 24 species were declining. Now, of those, 20 species were looked at in some detail, and it was found that we could not rule out the indirect effects of pesticides as contributing to their decline. And when you talk about indirect effects, what are you referring to? Primarily what we were looking at here was effects on the bird's food supply, whether those organisms have declined and what relationship there might be between pesticide use and the declines of those organisms and the birds themselves. I'm sure many people reading your report will be rather surprised because they probably thought that 20, 30 years ago we'd sorted out the problem of pesticides. This is a different sort of problem and it's one that's crept up on us rather stealthily. And I think one interesting fact to come out of this is that although these declines started off in the 1970s, it was actually 1990 before they were reported in the literature. So we're talking about a, a gap of 10 to 15 years. Are we using more chemicals today or are we using less chemicals today? In terms of tonnage, then pesticide use has decreased. But if you look at it in terms of the area treated, pesticide use has actually increased. And are those pesticides that we use today different? Are they more active? They are more active. Many of the chemicals, because they can be used at lower doses, people say, well, this must be good for the environment because less chemical is going on. And if you compare a modern insecticide with an old-fashioned insecticide, you may find that the modern one is applied at less than one hundredth of the dose. But its effect is comparable to that of the old one in terms of what it kills across the board. This week's report makes clear the case for urgent action. It's not just the numbers of birds that are declining, it's the rate at which they're disappearing. The numbers of at least 10 species have halved in just 20 years. And the insects and plants like these which the birds feed on have been vanishing just as fast. And if that wasn't serious enough, there are other natural factors that have been exacerbating the problem. The weather, both long and short term, can have an impact on bird populations. Last year's cold late spring resulted in poor breeding for many species. The continuing drought also takes its toll on chick rearing. On its own, the weather may not be that significant, but if bird populations are already weakened by lack of food due to pesticides, then it can tip the balance. Predators kill a considerable number of birds. Among the culprits is the fox, known to take ground-nesting birds or eggs. There are other suspects. Grey squirrels, domestic cats, magpies, 
and birds of prey like sparrowhawks. Native predators have always been with us, so species like sparrowhawk and magpie, they're certainly increasing in numbers and they do eat a lot of birds, but there really is no evidence to suggest that they're having a big impact on the numbers of any of these species of declining songbird. But of course, it's not just songbirds. A whole variety of our animals and plants have been severely damaged by intensive agriculture. Simon Lister, who heads the National Network of Wildlife Trusts, maintains that modern farming practices and pesticides have impoverished the British countryside. So what species in particular are we seeing less of in the countryside today? Uh, almost all species of, of animals and plants are, are not as abundant as they were. I mean, an intensive agriculture has really been devastating for a variety of mammals, insects, reptiles, amphibians, plants. I mean, to take some of the mammals, uh, something like the hare, for example. I mean, once widespread throughout most of Britain, but here in southwest England, it's an absolute disaster area. Just nothing like as, as common as it once was. And, it, and it's not just the mammals. I mean, take some of the insects. The meadow brown butterfly, for example. I mean, here in, in the summer, in a pasture like this, you'd be seeing clouds of meadow brown butterflies. They're still around, but just nothing like as, as, as abundant as they were. Do these problems extend to, to pond life and species we see in ponds? There's a pond behind us here. I mean, being a farm pond, it's, it's degraded, it's filled in, and because of the chemicals, uh, the water quality isn't good enough for the farms to breed. I mean, if you look out at this pasture here, 30 or 40 years ago, there would have been frogs about. Now, this habitat is about as hospitable as the moonscape for, for a frog. You just won't find them there. Is this what we're talking about over here at the moment? Well, exactly that. There you have it. I mean, just, just spray after spray. I mean, he here we are in a pasture in, in, in Somerset. It looks very nice and green, but actually it's got about as much diversity as a, as a car park. You've got ryegrass here, the odd stinging nettle. Now, I mean, had we been here uh, 30 or 40 years ago, you could have expected to see a huge variety of species of wildflowers. Cowslips, uh, for, for yeah. example, would have been common. Uh, Oxide daisies. Even orchids, people think of orchids as being rare, but really green-winged orchids would have been here everywhere 30 or 40 years ago. And if you go to unimproved grassland, you can still find them. But what we're finding is that, you know, we've got these things still in a few nature reserves, but out in, in the farm landscape, in wildlife terms, it's dead, dead poor, particularly out in the field centres. And this is due principally to different farming methods or to the use of pesticides? No, this is entirely due to chemicals uh, which are encouraging this ryegrass, which then swamps out every other kind of species of, of, of wildflower. <laughs> People are looking for low input farming. We think it's probably better and what they want is for low impact farming and that's what we're trying to deliver. Richard Trowe Smith is the spokesman for the multi-million pound industry that supplies the chemicals and pesticides to our farmers. How do you react to this latest report which charts not only a decline in bird life but in wildlife and signals that pesticides are one of the causes? I think the report uh, that we saw we considered to be quite fair. Uh, there was quite a lot of evidence put forward there. Um, and I think we would not gainsay the fact that um, it's well recognised that uh, there are effects, uh, indirect effects, of pesticides on wildlife. You, you accept that pesticides are one of the principal reasons why some of our bird species are disappearing? No, certainly not the principal reason. I think it's much, much more complicated than that. Just one of the reasons. Um, we've got to think about things like um, loss of habitat, there's a considerable loss of habitat. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to think about the changes in crop rotations, the fact that farmers are growing crops in large blocks of land, where it would be much better to produce a mosaic of smaller plots. The fact that they have been putting in autumn-sown crops rather than spring-sown crops, so you haven't got the autumn stubbles for the birds to feed on. There are other factors, as you say, but the report is quite specific that there is a direct correlation between decline in species of birds and the use of pesticides. Certainly uh, for some species of birds, I think we can show that the fact that uh, at a critical time in their breeding period, they are probably not getting sufficient weed seed or insects at the cru crucial time they need them. And I, I think 
it's such is the efficiency of our products now, mm. that is having an effect, yes. Isn't it rather depressing? 30 years ago, there was this big international scandal about the use of pesticides killing off birds, and yet here we are, 35 years on, and we're still confronting a problem where what's used on the land is actually having such a, a damaging effect on our wildlife. It's a very different picture from what it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, there, we, there were, yes, direct effects on the things. The products then were having a direct effect on the thing. What's happening now is an indirect effect because in the intervening years we learnt the lessons as an industry of what was happening 30 years ago. One of the things we've been doing is altering the chemicals we're using. For example, in the old days, until about five years ago, if I wanted to kill an aphid on wheat, an aphid on wheat, by the way, is like green fly in your greenhouse. It's something which invades and you've got to get rid of it and fast. I would use something like this and this is a pretty strong insecticide that just about kills every insect and of course the insects are the food of the birds therefore if you kill all the insects there's nothing for the birds to eat. So instead of this we now use a rather different one. It's a, a selective aphicide and it only kills a relatively few bugs including the aphids that we want to kill. It's not perfect but instead of using a sort of scatter shot, kill everything and you solve the problem, we're now trying to target our enemies, in this case aphids on wheat, a great deal more selectively. And in general, we're using fewer chemicals than we were 10 years ago. I think you should be aware, if you like, the watchword that we're using it as an industry, and also the government is using, is that we will use as little as possible, but as much as necessary. And that's crucial. Why do you say as much as necessary? Because if you use too little, it is ineffective, or it just doesn't do the job, it doesn't control something. You mean we won't produce enough food we or we won't, won't produce no, you enough won't food actually, at a certain price? It won't actually do the job for which the product was designed. Around the chemically enhanced crops, there still is wildlife, but marginalised to those areas that have escaped the sprayers. People still see lots of rabbits around the fields and, and other forms of wildlife, so th there are still some good things happening, aren't there? Oh, yes, we must get things in, in perspective. It's in the field centres that, by and large, things are so bad. But, of course, at the field edges, there are still some very important wildlife habitats. Indeed, just behind us, there's this piece of rough grass, and there's a pond here. Let's go and have a look and see what we can find. OK. What would, you, what would you expect to find there? Would you expect that to look very different? Well, yes, of course, you see the habitat's much better here. We've got different species of plants here. Look, 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 there's a grass snake. We're incredibly lucky to see that. Yeah. Just stay there, stay there, don't disturb it. We're fantastically lucky. That's the first snake I've seen this spring. But also, I mean, I'm amazed to find it here because although this is a nice piece of rough grassland, they like large areas and we're surrounded by this intensive... Uh, they're really rare now, are they? Uh, well, I mean, their distribution is throughout southern Britain. Um, they were mm. once common and widespread, but they're now in rather restricted pockets. And in this sort of farmed landscape, we're really, really lucky to see it. Wow, just look at, look at, look at the green, the sort of yellow collar they've got. Oh, isn't he beautiful? There he goes. Farmland ponds like this are becoming increasingly scarce and of course they're tremendously important for a whole variety of, of wildlife. Um, the grass snake that we saw um, will come down here to find the, the frogs and, and toads that they feed on. And then of course it's dragonflies, and flies, and newts um, and a whole variety of species will depend on ponds. And of course they're nothing like as common as they were. So what should farmers do? What would you like to see them do uh, to prevent this happening? Well, I think the most important thing is to say that a great many farmers are really trying now. I mean, some of them are interested in, in, in conservation and, and, and are making a big effort to conserve what, what ponds there are, to use less chemicals. But they, they are the exception, and one can't really expect all farmers to do it unless there are financial incentives are right. So what I'd like to see happen is to see more incentives for wildlife-friendly farming so that farmers actually get a financial reward if they maintain their ponds, if they maintain their hedges, at the moment, farmers will only do that if it's out of the goodness of their hearts. You know, we need to make it more financially interesting. Because if we ask farmers to use...